Sometimes all you need to fight crime is a fancy suit. Sure, superpowers help, but truly the MCU has proven that a powerful suit can stand toe-to-toe -to -toe with some of the universe's biggest threats. Like, you can be a total goofball, but if you're in a suit that can shrink, then you're suddenly one of the most dangerous people on the planet. So what do you think is the strongest super suit in the MCU based on power? Well, there's quite a few options out there, and that's what I'm going to talk about today. So let's get into our discussion of power rankings of super suits right now. Alright, I want to start off with the least powerful, powerful suit, and then work my way up. So that's why I'm starting with Captain America's stealth suit that we first saw at the beginning of Captain America the Winter Soldier. Look, Captain America doesn't need a suit in order to do the things he does. It doesn't necessarily enhance his ability in any discernible way except for making him a bit more bulletproof thanks to the Kevlar body armor. But even then, I've always been fascinated with whether Steve Rogers could deflect a bullet with his bare skin or not. Like. Falcon and the Winter Soldier showed that Super Soldiers definitely aren't bulletproof, which means Cap has just been incredibly proficient at deflecting any and all bullets shot in his direction. But on the flip side, he's also taking punches from Thanos like a champ, and that would mean that Thanos is technically not as strong as a bullet. I don't know, strength levels are weird in the MCU, and I'm already off topic. I'm still discussing Cap's stealth suit. The reason this is a powerful suit, albeit the least powerful but powerful nonetheless, is because of what it allows allows Captain America to do. Because it's a stealth suit, Cap is able to deploy more tactical and strategic methods of smashing his enemies with a shield than he would in the bright red, white, and blue, which in turn makes him more powerful. Plus, the stealth suit is a massive upgrade from his previous suit, which was the Cap suit from the first Avengers movie, and just a monstrosity to look at, so I think that warrants enough of a spot on the bottom of the most powerful suit list. Plus, we know Cap liked it because he actually dons it again when the group go to attack Farmer Thanos at the start of Endgame. It's such a cool suit. Alright, for a few of these entries, I'm going to combine a few suits that group together well, so coming in near the bottom of the list is just about every Spidey villain suit that we've seen in the MCU. And yes, I am now counting Toby and Andrew's villains since they're officially in the MCU, which is great for this list. But let's be real, although Spider-Man has some of the best villains, the suits themselves don't always translate to power. Like sure, the Vulture suit in Homecoming was probably the most powerful for what it needed to do. and. It it was kind of scary looking, but it was so bulky that of course it was hard to maintain. Then you have Mysterio, who might have the coolest design in the MCU, but the suit itself is just smoke and mirrors. But does that make it more powerful? Does the fact that it effectively pretends to be powerful and tricks almost everyone except the average comic reader make it actually more powerful in the long run? That's tough to say. And then what about the suits of older villains? Forget about him. Like, there's a reason why No Way Home destroyed the traditional Green Goblin suit immediately and just had Willem Dafoe look like his natural self, rather than use the goblin outfit again. It's because Willem Dafoe is a fantastic actor with a perfect goblin face. Oh, I know, that's mean. I don't mean to be harsh, but I'm just saying his smile and sinister aura is ten times better than whatever costume he could wear. Plus, the Green Goblin suit didn't serve much purpose. In fact, the most powerful actual suit might be Paul Giamatti rhino suit because of how devastating it looks and how much it amplifies the strength of just one normal dude. Plus the fact that Andrew remembers fighting that guy more than anyone else, pretty impressive overall. Star-Lord's suit is moderately powerful because it mainly gives him the power of a spacesuit in just his helmet. I won't spend too much time on it because it's not technically a full suit, rather a collection of a very useful helmet, rocket boots, and a whole hodgepodge of gizmos and gadgets, but it's still kinda a suit that allows him to breathe in space. I'm not even sure how that works. Where's the oxygen coming from? I have so many questions. But also, extra points for style, right? Yes, Falcon had a pretty fancy first suit when he was just Falcon, and it allowed him to perform extreme aerial stunts that would definitely make me motion sick. Like, I think the opening of the Falcon and the Winter Soldier TV show is the perfect example of why Falcon is so cool. His wings make him the best flyer in the MCU, and it doesn't even seem close, right? Plus, the suit comes with Red Wing, which is one of the most helpful little gadgets in any hero's arsenal. But I'm gonna be honest with you, I like his Falcon suit more than his Captain America suit. Because yes, the new Cap suit should be more powerful now that it's completely made of vibranium and bulletproof and combines Falcon and Captain America aesthetics, but if you're making a bulletproof suit, can you please cover the very top of your head since, you know, that's probably your most vulnerable part? Just a thought. 
It really helps when your best friend is a genius billionaire playboy philanthropist. Rhodey's journey to War Machine is kind of funny when you think about it. He only hopped in the War Machine suit when he saw Tony making a fool of himself, then decided he was going to keep the suit and pilot it himself. The government agreed to let him be the sole occupant of the suit and he started his military missions around the world. Now overall the War Machine suit is just like the Iron Man suit except with guns on top of guns on top of guns. And I think there's something to be said about how Tony wanted to make Iron Man suits because he didn't want to make military weapons anymore. Then one of his suits gets decked out with countless weapons and becomes the military's top weapon? I mean, good thing it's his friend, I guess? Anyway, War Machine is who you call if you need cavalry. If you need something to explode, you call War Machine. And while it could have used an emergency parachute system during Civil War, it's still a pretty durable suit. And here's the big question. What's going to happen to the War Machine suit now? I always figured that Tony was the one upgrading and reinforcing the War Machine suit for Rhodey. But now that Tony is gone and Rhodey is the star of the upcoming Armor Wars, what's the deal? Does Rhodey have to find a way to fix the suit himself if it gets damaged, or does he have to find someone else to repair it? In my mind, the perfect setup would be if Riri Williams is introduced in Armor Wars, then Rhodey can be her superhero mentor while Riri repairs the War Machine suit for him. That sounds like a win-win, right? Sometimes a powerful suit just means containing a powerful hero. For this entry, I'm doing something a bit different. It's been said that Captain Marvel is one of the most powerful heroes in the universe. She's so powerful that she had to be off-planet for most of Endgame protecting the rest of the galaxy because if she was involved from the start of the final battle against Thanos, then the fight probably would have been over much quicker. That's the overall problem with massively strong and powerful heroes in the long run, but although I would argue we haven't really seen the full extent of Captain Marvel's powers that make her one of the most powerful heroes ever, unless you count her battle with Thor in that what-if episode, we still know she can pack one heck of a punch. Watching her plow through Ronin's forces at the end of her movie, and then watching her pop Thanos' ship like a balloon in Endgame, proves that she's a true force to be reckoned with. And someone like her doesn't necessarily need any type of suit in order to help her out, but I will say the Captain Marvel suit is an incredibly powerful suit because of its durability. Again, did you see her just use her power to destroy those massive ships? How is that suit so durable? It doesn't burn up in space or get damaged, but rather keeps its form all while being able to change colors at a moment's notice. That's fun. Those Star Force uniforms are amazing. Alright, this is another combo because both Ant-Man and the Wasp have their name in a superhero movie, and the suits are relatively the same, minus a few key upgrades. Obviously, the Wasp suit is better than the Ant-Man suit, so let's start with Ant-Man. I don't think the first few Ant-Man appearances really highlights just how incredible the Ant-Man suit is. In terms of power and function, it immediately makes whoever is wearing it practically the most dangerous person in the world. Like, in an Iron Man suit, you kind of need to know how to use it properly and how to activate its complicated features in order to fly and blast. But really, for the Ant-Man suit, if you know how to push a button, you can operate it with relative ease. Yes, Scott Lang is a master thief and has a mechanical engineering degree, but really, has any of those things come in handy for him while wearing the suit? Yes, he's made some small adjustments himself, but Scott is still an overall goofy guy and an average Joe. The suit allows him to sneak almost anywhere and be a major fighting threat thanks to his strength level while being the size of an ant. It's truly incredible. Plus, you add in his ability to become Giant Man, and in the right circumstances, Ant-Man is almost impossible to beat. But then you have the Wasp suit, which adds more tactical and offensive upgrades to the suits like wings and blasters that make Hope a very powerful weapon. Like, honestly, she could probably beat Scott in a fight 9 times out of 10. So again, the suits embedded with Pym particles are incredibly powerful. I mean, just look at the What If episode where Hank Pym turns evil. He successfully uses the Ant-Man yellow jacket suit to wipe out almost all the Avengers with relative ease. That's scary. The MCU did a great job with teasing us with the Iron Spider. Yes, Peter Parker's Iron Man-esque suit in Civil War and in Homecoming was a lot of fun in the way that it blended traditional Spider-Man features in a fancy Iron Man suit, but the ending of Homecoming saw Tony present Peter with the Iron Spider suit and a spot on the Avengers, only for Peter to turn it down and keep his feet on the ground for a bit longer. 
but we didn't have to wait very long to see the Iron Spider in action. Thanos and his goons soon came knocking, and when the Earthbound fight quickly became a spacebound fight, Tony had to deploy the Iron Spider in order to save Peter's life. And this part I've always had trouble with. Peter is supposed to be a smart kid, but his reaction to him losing oxygen as they go into space is more like, hey, wait a minute, Mr. Stark, what's happening? Which, sure, you could chalk up to adrenaline or Peter's sole determination to save the wizard, but Peter should be a bit smarter than that, don't you think? But I guess it doesn't matter because it gives us the Iron Spider suit. It's such a cheerworthy and awesome moment as the Iron Spider wraps around Peter's normal suit and brings him even closer to the Iron Man look. This suit is just overall helpful. It has almost all the upgrades of the regular Spider-Man suits, but comes with a fancy set of spider legs and is way more durable with its nanotechnology. Like, it successfully neutralized Doc Ock's arms by infecting it with nanotechnology and taking control, which is something I didn't even know it could do. Does that work with all machines? That's something we probably will never know now, since the end of No Way Home sees Peter embrace a more traditional homemade costume, which implies that he's done with the Iron Spider. But my thing is, Peter, do you not get cold with your spider powers? At least wear the Iron Spider suit through winter in New York, and switch over to more traditional garb when the sun's out, right? Maybe that's just me. The Black Panther suit is amazing. Well, at least the second one was. The first version that we saw in Captain America Civil War was an awesome looking suit, but didn't have the powers and the upgrades the second one had. Which is fine. I mean, T'Challa by himself had the power of the Black Panther, making him fast, strong, and agile, so he didn't need a super suit to make him more powerful. That first suit mainly served two purposes. The first was to make him absolutely bulletproof and practically damage-proof to just about anything, except for Black Widow's stingers for some reason. The second purpose was to both symbolize the Panther status and to be a little stealthy and hidden when needed, which perfectly encapsulates Wakanda overall. But it's really the second suit that earned such a high position on this list of most powerful suits. When T'Challa returned to Wakanda after Civil War, he found Shuri had perfected a brand new type of suit that wasn't just a heavy bulletproof suit of armor, but rather accentuated T'Challa's abilities and made them better. From the first instance of nanotechnology in a main superhero suit, which made T'Challa always be able to carry the Black Panther suit with him without any problem, to the boots that made him silent when he ran around, to the harnessing of kinetic energy that allowed him to absorb all the force that was dealt at him and then redirect it in one massive attack, the new suit is one of the most powerful in the MCU. It's such a tragedy that we lost to Chadwick Boseman at such a young age, and we won't get to see him go through all the suit upgrades that would have inevitably happened with each passing movie. It's still a little unclear what the future of the Black Panther mantle holds, so we'll have to see how the suit progresses over time. Of course, Iron Man has the most powerful suits. Like, if this was truly a ranking of most powerful suits in the MCU, this list would have Iron Man suits all over it. But I wanted to be fair and spread the love a bit, which is why I decided to group all of the Iron Man suit into one massive entry. There's just so much power behind almost every one of Tony's suits. Look at his very first one, which he managed to make in a cave in Afghanistan using limited resources. That was still able to get one out of two people out safely, stop an oncoming swarm of bad guys, and then fly away. Sure, the flight didn't get very far, but that's still a tremendous first attempt. And then you know what they say, once you build a giant robot suit, you can't stop building giant robot suits. Tony was hooked, and thus Iron Man was officially born. And with each passing upgrade, Tony's suits got more powerful. It felt like whenever there was a flaw with one suit, the next suit would just have an upgrade for it. Sure, there was a time during Iron Man 3 when he was making so many Iron Man suits that it seemed like the structural integrity was flawed, with the suits falling apart and being destroyed relatively easily, but they eventually got even more powerful. Of course, his most powerful suit was his final suit, the Mark 85, that we saw in Endgame. And the incredible thing about this is that in Infinity War, the suit he was wearing was the Mark 50, which means during that five-year period where he was presumably taking it easy, he made 35 new upgrades to the suit. A tinkerer has got to tinker, I suppose. So, this final suit had the all-powerful nanotechnology, which, yes, started to move into basically a magic type of science where all Tony had to do was think about a weapon, or a repulsor blast, or anything, and the nanotech would make it, which is a bit of a cop-out when you think of it, but it's still so much fun to see on screen. Having a final suit that takes all the best things about every previous Iron Man suit and combines them into one final armor, that's 
capable of housing the Infinity Stones and allowing a mortal man to snap his fingers without being instantly obliterated is a major accomplishment. Do you think if Tony had 10 more years and he got to Mark 200 or something, he would have survived his final snap? I think so. Now, there's a difference between most powerful and most stylish suit. If this was a style contest, then I think Doctor Strange would win. I mean, the magic cloak, the jewelry, the yellow gloves that he wore for only the Thor Ragnarok scene but then eventually got rid of because Wong probably told him they were stupid looking, etc. The whole outfit works.